All right, welcome back everybody. So today we're gonna go through smoke detectors. As you can see, Drew and I, say hi Drew. Hello. I've been disassembling smoke detectors for everybody. It's actually been a lot of fun. Um, I was told as a kid I like to tear things apart, try to figure out how to put it back together. Uh, isn't that just what an engineer does? I don't know, maybe. So smoke detectors, we're gonna talk about uh, the different types of smoke detectors. We're gonna go through the NFPA 72 requirements. Um, as always, so we're, we're referencing Joint Commission standards, D&B standards as well. Joint Commission EC235, EP3, uh, we're still in that series, and DMV PE2 SR10. Um, so let's just dive right into the different types of smoke detectors. Uh, we've got, there's two primary types um, that you'll see ionization type and photoelectric. Photoelectric is broken down further. Unfortunately, we don't have any ionization here to show everybody. Uh, we only have photoelectric and we only have a specific type of photoelectric. So we, we used our artistic ability uh, to draw kind of how these things work. Um, and go ahead, feel free to judge in the comments below my, my art skills. Uh, ionization type detectors are um, interesting, uh, th how they function. So they are actually able to, to pick up smaller particles, uh, less than 0.1 micrometers uh, in size and invisible products of combustion. How they function is they actually use um, a radioactive isotope, uh, Americum 241, and there is positive and negative power charge on the smoke detector uh, as it comes in. And because of that, the um, alpha particles from the American 241, it causes an ion exchange between these, these charged plates. When smoke enters, we're just gonna go ahead and show it. When smoke enters in here, what it does is it actually disrupts this ion flow. When that ion flow is disrupted between these two electrical uh, charges, that is what actually triggers the ionization detectors into alarm. So you probably don't have ionization detectors in your hospitals. Um, most common place that you'll see them is actually uh, the stuff that you can buy um, from the store and use at your house. Ionization detectors are the most common type of detectors used for the battery powered. Um, so you don't have to worry about uh, radiation or anything like that. The alpha particles are very heavy. They actually just bounce right off of dead skin cells. So you don't, it's, that's nothing to worry about. Um, the more common type in hospitals are photoelectric detectors. And there's two primary types. There is a light scattering detector and a light obscuration. We'll talk about those too. Um, I think it's important to note that the ionization actually picks up fires more quickly from a fast burning uh, fire. Um, and if you think about that from the perspective of where they're used how, uh, in, in, in houses, you know, a house is a, is a giant combustible product. Um, lots of combustible interior finishes um, versus photoelectrics that can detect slow smoldering fires, which is more common what you would see in healthcare. And that's because we, we limit combustibility significantly in healthcare, where we use non-combustible and limited combustible construction. So um, it does matter like where these are placed and how they're used as well. There, there's a whole design aspect to all of this. We're not gonna get into that. But they pick up visible products greater than 0.1 micrometers. Um, and light scattering, how a light scattering works, and that's what all of these are, is light scattering type detectors. We have an LED and we have a photodiode uh, down below here. And that LED produces light going across. It doesn't interact with the photodiode until smoke starts entering. And that smoke, the LED actually bounces the light down to the photodiode. And that's what triggers the light scattering detectors to go into alarm. Um, that's the most common kind of, kind of detector you'll find, smoke detector you'll find in a hospital. Light obscuration is very similar. The best way to think about it is a beam detector in like your atriums and stuff like that. So it's got, they do have it for detectors, but um, that's, a, that's how you think about it. It's got a beam and over here is our photodiode. And when smoke enters, it actually starts blocking some of the light that hits that photodiode. When it hits a certain percentage, whatever it's set up for its sensitivity, um, is when it, it goes into alarm. Uh, so, 
that's our kind of like construction history. Let's look at a few real quickly before we jump, in, jump into the, the code requirements. So this is a, uh, all these, like I said, are the light scattering detectors. And what you can see is we've got an LED light. I don't know if you can see it or not in there. And we got our photodiode. And it, it points its light down when it's inside there. And when smoke is entering is when it's able to refract that light back to the diode. All of these are the same, similar concept. So this one is a, a lot easier to see. We've got our light, we've got our photodiode. You can see that there are different angles. We've got a pillar between it. The smoke refracts that light into the diode. So um, I think it's also important to mention we have addressable detectors, non-addressable detectors, and all of these are addressable. We've talked about that in all of our videos. Uh, but it, one, one interesting fact is different detectors are structured differently. Ah, there it is. So this base for, for simplex is actually addressable versus a notifier, for example, the actual head, uh, smoke head that goes in is addressable. So and this smoke head uh, clearly all goes together, but that's what you see. So when you're thinking about like asset tagging and things like that, you have to consider that. How are you going to do it? Are you doing it based on the addressable device? Or are you doing it just on the smoke head? So just something else to think about. Um, so for our testing, in FPA 72 2010, as always, we're using 2010 edition because CMS has adopted the 2012 uh, version of Life Safety Code, uh, which references the 2010. Um, table 14319H requires that smoke detectors are semi-annually, semi there's a visual inspection for them. And what we're looking for here is that smoke detector is, is intact on the ceiling. Uh, it's doing what it's supposed to. And we're, we're looking for things, things that are most common in hospitals is as we're doing uh, construction or painting or whatever, sometimes people will cover these up with gloves, with tape, with all kinds of stuff. Uh, so they're often forgot uh, to remove those things. So that's, that's really the main purpose of the semi-annual inspection. Table 14, 422, 14G1, that's a mouthful, is the actual testing requirements for smoke detectors. Um, and that's where it says you actually have to spray smoke. Uh, and w uh, we don't have the tool with us, I could show you guys, but uh, spray smoke into the smoke head um, and make sure that it physically activates. Um, so don't use a magnet. We've said that a few other times, don't use a magnet. Magnets can only be used after you've tested the functionality of the smoke detector. Um, and then section 14453 talks about sensitivity. Those options, uh, there's five different options there. Most common for addressable systems is panel reports. You can actually, it's an addressable system, it can pull the sensitivity, you print out a report. You can do calibrated test method, manufacturer calibrated equipment. Um, so we talked a little bit about these in previous videos, but just real quick, one year after install, you have to do a sensitivity test. And then as, after it's calibrated, you can do uh, alternate years. And then after the second calibration, as long as everything is fine and you're not having issues, you can go up to five years. So go back and check, check that out. One last thing to mention uh, before we, we call this one a wrap is multi-criteria detectors. Uh, some detectors, we're really not gonna do a series on these ones, but some detectors have multiple functions. You can do smoke, rate of rise, heat detector, and uh, fixed temp heat detectors. All of that can kind of go together. Um, but multi-criteria detectors have to do uh, individual tests. So you have to test every function of a multi-criteria detector. So if it's smoke and heat, you have to test the smoke and the heat. Um, so I think that's it. Drew, anything? That's you it. good? Okay. All right. Until next time, happy learning.